Okay, so today we are hanging out at Coup de Tete, my friends that are custom hat makers. The best hats you can literally buy. Something interesting about these guys captured my attention, and it was how they were doing their product photography. These guys are expert hat makers. They might not necessarily be expert photographers, but that wasn't the case here. The product photography on the website was, it was way better than I expected. Not that I thought it would be garbage, but it was just really good. So I wanted to come by the shop and ask them what it was about the setup that made these photos so great. So then I stumbled into this little room and I found this little setup with all of these little accoutrements, all these fun little accessories and side lights. We tried in a couple different setups. At first we started with the stark white kind of background, but it just, it wasn't really our vibe. It was a bit too clean. We really liked the texture on this particular wall. You get that, the kind of white speckle from the brick behind. And we felt that it added a little bit more grit. Now this is, this is maybe more of like a, a nerdy photography thing. Did you know to put the grid on the light? I read the manual and it kind of just told really? me that it was supposed to. It focuses the light, it cuts out some of the shadow. That's exactly correct. Yeah. So I was, oh, honestly, when I peeked under here, I came in, I looked, and I saw the grid and I was like, that's a big point for sure because not many people would know to put that on or would read the manual, Yeah. to be, to be honest. So this is pretty new to me and so it's kind of a learning process as we go. So right off the bat, our friend Friends are already ahead of most businesses. I think if you're an entrepreneur, a small business, a large business, but photography is not your thing, you're not gonna know to buy a light dome. You're not gonna know to put a grid on the light dome that you didn't know to buy. So their interest in photography, their curiosity into photography has already set them steps ahead of most people. When you look at your video where you shot the fly the flags things, yeah. that was the inspiration yeah. behind this where I took it to my sister and was like, we need to change our whole photography game and shoot with this style is why we got the side lights and the different pieces. And then I was like, this is my idea. And then Mouse was just like, this it. is how we actually do it. Did you set the table out from the wall for any particular reason? We first put it up against the wall when we were shooting and then we found we wanted a little bit more depth between the backdrop and there. So that it just kind of put the hat more in focus. Yep. Is this, is this what I think it is? We got incense. So we can add that kind of smoke effect that we saw in your one video. So, and it's really cool with the hat specifically because it, the smoke will come up and hit the bottom of the hat and curl off. So you could have all this different depth of field, different levels and stuff like that. With what we're shooting, we're shooting something that's like extremely vertical with that hat stand. So what I'm curious about is like, how do we then take things like a lantern or add some more levels to this so it's not just hat up top and cool stuff around the bottom of it. I think that's the one thing that we've kind of been trying to figure out is like, how do we add some more depth and- it's more 3D. Yeah, uh, yeah, some more pieces into it. Yeah. The biggest thing I noticed right away was when Jay said he wants more depth. We need a foreground, a midground, and a background. Jay mentioned he wanted some taller props in the background, but then the props in the foreground, because they're so small, get lost because the hat is so vertically standing. Now my instant thought to remedy this situation is literally turn the room the other way. They've chosen to set up their booth on the short side of the room, whereas I think the longer side gives you so much more option and flexibility when it comes to depth of field and play, because now you don't even have to be in the room to shoot. You could move that hat almost straight to the door and be outside the room shooting into the room and you'd have all of that extra space for creating a scene. You'd have the counter in the background. 
sticker lantern or anything on it above the vertical space where a hat would typically stand. Then you can have all the things on the foreground which you could even use to shoot through. Now that's a lot of work given that they've already mounted this softbox to the wall, but it looked like it was on a hinge arm that you might be able to extend out further so you don't have to actually remount that. The only thing you would lose is your black speckled wall, which was obviously something that they liked. Now if you wanted to put a paper backdrop in the back and get all Art Attack with it and spatter a bunch of white paint a la Mr. Brainwash to the background, that would also give you the same kind of effect that the brick wall has. Now the thing is, the further away you're gonna move your subject, the hat in this case, that background's gonna disappear anyway. So if what you're wanting is more depth, all the things you're going to do to get that will slowly diminish that black speckle wall, no matter what. Thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video. Now, if you liked the intro where you heard all of those quick cut sounds of the team making a hat, lots of steam, little bells, cool sounds of the materials being cut with very cool devices that I've never seen, uh, not all of those sounds were real. Different swoosh sounds, impacts, things to accentuate the sounds that did get picked up. <sighs> art list. Let's just use the bell, for example, with that steam press. I think it's a steam press. We could just have that steam press lift and it would sound like this. That's fine, but you put a riser right before the bell, builds that anticipation without you even knowing it. You just feel it, you hear it. Pair that with a tiny little punch out digitally. Now you've got something cooking. And how easy was that to do? Now, Artlist isn't just for sound effects. I also wanna pair this video with a bluesy, western feeling rock track. Eh. Eh. Ah, there it is. There's several different subscription bundles to choose from. Make sure you're looking at the right ones. All of these specifically curated so that you're getting exactly what you need if you do sign up. Now that subscription offers you unlimited access to tens of thousands of tracks, over 20,000 sound effects. I know we use it and we love it. If you wanna sign up using the link below, you will receive two months free and that'll be added to any annual subscription. To check out Artlist down below and thank you again for sponsoring this video. Now here's an interesting concept as well. The beginning intro, we shot some B-roll. I wanted to set up a whole bunch of different hats so the audience, you, could see the vastness of skill and style that coup de tete are able to make in a hat. In the middle of their shop, there's a skylight that shines down beautifully soft, even light. We placed a roll cart right underneath, put a hat stand on it, and we set each hat down. Now using an 85 mil with a 1.2 aperture, which is so incredibly shallow, we were able to make that hat pop except well while using the backdrop of their studio, which is super unique and well lit to create the ambiance, but also make that hat pop out to the point where it looks 3D on the screen. So the coup de tete team could change their lens choice within the small room they're already shooting on to get more depth without having to change the position of the room. Yes, that 85 1.2 looks amazing. Can you look up how much the 85 1.2 RF is? but that's a $2,600 lens USD. That ain't cheap. That's a massive investment. You could shoot on a nifty 50. That's gonna crop in and give you almost no detail with all the accessories you have laid out on the base. I think sometimes if you have too many props and there's too many textures, the hat might get lost. In this case, because we shot it with a 1.2, 85, it smooths everything around it and the only thing you're focused on is the hat. So it's a tricky thing. You're always kind of playing a bit of give and take until you finally get to where you're happy with, which is ultimately a personal preference. This is their product. However they choose to display it is ultimately up to them. Pun intended, but hats off to the team at Coup de Tete because you guys did a fantastic job with your photo setup. I'm honestly so impressed and you are miles ahead of what most anybody else is doing already.